Everybody, welcome to Impact Theory. I'm here with Devin Harris. Uh, Devin, I am super excited to have you on, man. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited as well. I've uh, been following you from afar, so it's, it's great to connect here. Definitely, dude. And it is super rare that I begin an interview with a quote from somebody's bio, uh, but this hit me so powerfully and it really encapsulates um, what I think is so exciting about the way that you think. Um, so I want to start it with this. So this is straight from your bio. The greatest gift yeah. Devin Harris ever received was the belief that a positive attitude and a never say die philosophy would carry him farther than a sense of injustice and a heart filled with anger. So I want to know, man, how how did you come to that conclusion? Obviously, growing up in one of the most violent parts of um, Kingston, Jamaica, that isn't sort of an obvious um, way to think. So how did you start thinking like that? It's a really good question. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure when that uh, when that flip switch in my mind. You know, I often blame or, or uh, my grandmother for the way I thought. I, I spent my early years with her outside of Kingston, a rural parish of Saint Elizabeth. She told me these amazing stories about soldiers and how they could uh, perform these amazing feats and not get get injured. Were the ones that kind of lit up my five year old mind, my little imagination, but. More than that, it, it inspired me to want to do things that other people thought were impossible or you know, just incredibly difficult. Yeah, that it's so interesting to me because almost certainly people will come into this and they'll have read the headline that will announce that you're one of the, the original Jamaican bobsledders that the movie Cool Runnings was based on. And so the punchline to your yeah. story is pretty extraordinary. You go to an elite military academy. Uh, you end up being one of four people on this bobsledding team. And, you know, it's obviously extraordinary that you guys born in a country with no snow and then, you know, being able to compete yeah. in the Winter Olympics. So it's yeah. uh, it's pretty crazy. But I, I really want to dive into, one, what it was like growing up where you're growing up. Because right now we're living through an era where the sort of pull yourself up by your bootstraps is, it's really a divisive statement. But it sits mm -hmm. at the core of how I changed my own life. It sits at the core of so many people's transformations. And I just really want to understand how you began to develop that. So if it started, grandma planted a seed. How did that, like dreaming and looking at these big houses and, you know, how does that begin to take shape in your young mind? So I'm 15 years old. I just started running track. And no, I'm from Jamaica, but I'm not one of the sprinters. <laughs> Unlucky me, right? Um, but it's 1979, Tom, and it's a year before the Moscow Olympics and ABC Wild World of Sports had a program called Road to Moscow, and it, in it they featured athletes from all over the world, different disciplines, telling their stories and so on. Now, when we think of Olympic athletes, we tend to think of these superhuman beings. But what I was seeing in that program were these average, ordinary people with extraordinary dreams. I'm like, crap, you know, basically then, you know, this show is telling me that anyone can become an Olympian within reason if they have these extraordinary dreams and an equally extraordinary desire to go after those dreams. And so by extension, you could literally go accomplish anything in your life if you have these extraordinary dreams and an equally extraordinary desire to, to achieve them. So that really, as I just said, you know, built on the, the seed that my grandmother planted. And so... I'm, I'm, I'm living in the middle of the hood and I'm dreaming about being an army officer and, and going to Sandhurst and, and competing in the Olympics. Admittedly, not as a bobsledder. That just kind of happened. So that is, um, it's so interesting to me when you begin to like piece the things together. And I, certainly ge um, genetics is going to play a part, right? So something tells me that mm -hmm. you and I are both sort of optimistic by nature. Um, ambitious certainly seems to fit you quite well. Um, was your grandmother saying things like you could be a soldier like that or you could live in a house like that one day? Did you have any adults that were telling you that or are you one of those people that pulled yourself out of the matrix? Yeah, no, I, no, I didn't have that. So, so, you know, unfortunately, my grandmother saw none of this. She died even before I left elementary school. And it's kind of, uh, you know, and when I, when I, Maybe the next book I write, I'm gonna, I am gonna. I did dedicate my last book to her, but what I really should have said was that her greatest ambition at the time was for me to learn to read. Mm -hmm. Now I've written a couple of books, 
you know, so that was that that was kind of what she wanted. She would tell me these stories. I don't know if she had a plan in mind, but that was the impact that she had on me. So when you think about the inner cities now, so you live in New York, obviously there are areas that are just ravaged. Um, what what do you think is ultimately the thing that will help people to change their circumstances? Um, so it's like you, you can't allow yourself to settle. And I think it's so easy to do that, right? Because, you know, stepping out of the environment that you find yourself in to go get that thing across the street that looks so much better and, you know, it's a much better life is difficult because you feel so out of place. You feel, you know, almost not so worthy. And you have to do, you know, I call it a real job on your mind. You have to convince yourself that you deserve this. If somebody were to ask me, what is the secret to success? It's, you know, the Will Smith notion of I'll die on this treadmill. And, and that to me is is one of the most powerful quotes I've ever heard. You know, he's talking about what separated him from other people. And he was like, you know, I, I get on a treadmill. I know what my goal is and I'll die before I'll get off this treadmill before I reach my goal. And I just thought, man, yeah. any motherfucker that's willing to go that hard on a treadmill, like, you know that they're going to succeed in life. So yeah. when I hear people talk about that, I, I am, I get drawn in hard. So what does yeah. it mean to you to keep on pushing or to have a do or die mentality? Well, in my mind, it's not like I have a choice but to achieve the goal that I set for myself. Uh, you know, and so of course, you know, keep on pushing has a bobsled analogy. And I tell you, my first bobsled run, I crawled in a sled behind a guy who had never driven one before. And People don't believe this because I joke around a lot. I'm scared of speed and height, right? That's bomb sledding. And I just remember being terrified. And I remember saying to myself, if I die, I die. But I'm going. There's just no way I'm not going down this track. And you know what? Three runs in, I was scared to death, but hooked. And, and so that's kind of the, the mentality that I approach the things that I really want is like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I just know I'm going to do it. And there's just, there's just no way that it's not going to happen. Uh, and so I just I throw myself into it. It's, uh, do or die. Now, you come across as super sweet. And I know when people ask you which of the um, bobsledders was based on you in the movie, you always say the guy who was a dreamer. Uh, but he also happened to be the guy that was super aggressive and, and identified as the sort of mean one. Is there yeah. that gear for you? Like, do you have a level of intensity and ferocity that you can switch into? Or are you always as sweet as you come across in interviews? Well, definitely when I, when I compete, I am a completely different person. I, I don't even recognize that guy. Um, in what way? Can you be specific? I, just, just I'm, 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 I'm way more intense than you, brother. Just way more. Um, you know, he was an intense guy. I am. Um, you can multiply that by 10 when, I, when I'm on the line. You know, I, I, so I speak about bobsledding all the time. Like when people watch American football, they see the aggression because they see a guy going up and hitting another guy. Bobsledders are just as aggressive. It, it's not as apparent because you're pushing a sled. But there's so much contempt that you have for the sled at the start. You want to put the, push the crap out of it, right? Um, I get... You know, you don't see that level of intensity on my face when I'm working on, a, on another another goal. But there, I I, I do get singularly focused, um, maybe to a fault. Do you you, know? I was uh, just going to ask you: Do you like that about yourself, or do you actually think it's a problem? I like that about myself. You know, but you, you know, all of us we spend time, or or we should anyway, kind of looking back on your life, and so. So this is how I would encapsulate, you know, those early years trying to get out of Olympic Gardens. So it's kind of like me being on one end of a rose garden, trying to get to the other end. And all I'm focused on is how I'm going to get to the other end and get into the other end. And I never pause, really, to smell the roses. And so if there's one thing I would change, really, is that ability to kind of take a, a, a few seconds to 
you know, sniff a rose and then move forward. So yeah, so to a fault in that sense, I, you know, I remember just having these conversations with my friends from high school and they're talking about all the shit that they were doing. I'm like, really? When? Really? When? And they're like, well, hold on, where were you? I'm like, I was training, I was busy, you know, so I, I do get that singularly focused. It's interesting. So I take a slightly different take on that. And maybe because I don't have kids, I'm not entirely sure. One of the most contentious posts that I put up in a long time was me saying this is a competition, referring basically to life. Like if you want to get something Mm -hmm. extraordinary, you're going to have to fucking work your ass off. And you've got to come at it so hard with so much intensity. And I and the like, you know, final phrase in the post was this is a competition. And people flipped out. And I was like, I don't understand people that fear. Actually, I do understand because for a long time when I was young, I feared competition because I didn't think I could win. I didn't think I could Mm -hmm. get good enough to win. And when I didn't think I could get good enough to win, then I was like, oh, yo, 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 competition. It's ugly. It's gnarly. It brings out the worst in people. Then when I realized, whoa, 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 I can actually improve. I can get better. The more energy I put into something, just like anybody else, the more time and energy you put into it, the better that you get. Doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you know genetic gifts don't play a role. They do for sure. But I can get better at something. And once I embrace that and realize, man, if you can channel that intensity, if you can love that about yourself, if you can find the joy in just all out pursuit of something, then Stop stopping and smelling the roses. I'm not saying don't. Like if that, if you're mm-hmm. motivated to stop and smell a rose, man, you should stop and smell a rose. But I'm just saying, if in that moment your motivation is I'm going to tear through these rose bushes and I'm imagining you getting ripped and cut by all the brambles and the thorns mm-hmm. as you're raging through this thing. For me, the ability to sometimes smell a rose and sometimes tear ass through a bramble and accept all the you know blood and sweat and tears, I get as more, if I'm completely honest, I get a lot more joy and a sense of self out of being willing and able to fucking tear through a bramble and take the sort of cuts that other people just aren't willing to deal with. Yeah, and, and I'm absolutely that way too. But I think that you know, we have to strive to live a really fulfilled life, a rounded life, you know, and I think it's, so it's really important uh, because there's nothing that I'm going to allow prevent me from reaching that goal. But as I'm goal looking of, back, I'm like, I'm, what, whatever that goal is that I'm pursuing, right? There's nothing that's going to prevent me from, from achieving the goal. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, if we can think holistically, I'm not sure how, because maybe I've never done it, how, how to mesh the two. This is the intellectual side of me saying, hey, you know, it's okay to smell the roses. I haven't figured out how to do it yet. Uh, because Have you, you know, really not? Well. I mean, when I, look, when I look at your life, you've done a lot of extraordinary things that are clearly engaging with other people, trying to help other people. All of that to me seems like savoring this human experience. Do you not see those things that way? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I mean, I guess now there is, there, there is, you know, as the the shift, as the focus has shifted from, man, I need to get out of the ghettos to go do something. And now I'm not done, but I'm on the way. And I think uh, the way I think is, hey, help others um, along the way. Take who you can take. Advise who you can advise. You can't necessarily put everybody on your back, but you can you can... You know, if you imagine you're, you're walking along the street and you meet a guy, going, hey, you know, you need to drop that and, and, and that will lighten your load or good job. Keep on going. That kind of thing. Um, that's what I'm doing now uh, as I continue to look for ways to, to, to grow. And if you had to define what a rounded life means, because I want to get back to this idea that they're sort of myopically focused on a goal and going just super, super hard for that. And then there is a rounded life. You, you said two things. You should live a fulfilled mm-hmm. life. You should live a rounded life. Um, can you define fulfillment? Can you define well-rounded? Yeah, which, as you know, success is such an individual, such a personal journey. But for me, it would be, yes, to accomplish those things, those trappings that the world see as success. But at the same time, recognize quite frankly, those things are fleeting. So what do you have left? You have family, right? Like I'm I'm married, I have five kids, I'm a homebody. 
you know, I, I don't roll around with the kids anymore. They're a little bit older. You know, I don't fool around with my son anymore. He's much stronger than me, you know. But but uh, just being able to, to, like, last summer, this, uh, well, you know, last July I was in Europe with my with my kids. And, and I love traveling through Europe, but the best part of that was just being there with my kids. You know, that for me brings a level of fulfillment. Um, just being able to um, share a, an inspirational word or a word of encouragement with somebody else and, and for them to come and say, man, you know what, I come off stage and this guy says, you know, I felt like you were talking to me. That brings fulfillment. So all the other trappings that I am my focus on are important to me, but being able to touch a life and bring joy and hope and inspiration to that life is also important. That makes, in my mind, a, a fulfilled life. I love that. When you're spending time with kids that are in the inner cities, um, what tools do you give them to do what you did? You made reference earlier to the lamppost. Um, it's probably mm -hmm. worth telling people what you were doing on that lamppost. Um, and then I'd love to know if that's the kind of thing that you're encouraging kids to do or, you know, just what that toolkit is that you hand to people. Yeah. So I was doing the D word. And, you know, when I, when I speak live, I ask people that, oh, are you doing drugs? No, man, I was dreaming. That was the D word. Right? I just kind of stood there and dream. And, and I think that's, you know, who's it? Napoleon Hill that said there's a starting point to all worthwhile achievements. Uh, and yeah, so when I'm speaking to kids in disadvantaged communities, I'm like, hey, have a dream, find a dream. And I know a lot of them want, want to be professional athletes. Or, and that's fine. Um, I challenge them, I encourage them to dream, but I also encourage them to, to do as, as, to pursue an education, get educated, because that gives you... Uh, a leg up, it gives you a, a level of confidence and is going to open doors for you that you won't be able to, would not be able to open otherwise, right? And I, think I, agree, I, I, I agree with you so violently on education that I'd love for you to take a minute, explain why it opens doors. How does an education open doors? I know people think this is self-evident, but I think the reason people don't pursue it is they really don't understand why it matters. I think, first of all, is that it, it gives you a level of confidence that you cannot have if you are not educated. You know, I, I wanna, uh, so it really does start there. It gives you that sense that, hey, there, let's say it's a job, that there's a job over there that I can go apply for because of, I have gained this knowledge and I have a piece of paper uh, to show for it. But more importantly, I think it's, it's the fact that we know that lifelong learning is is really the key to continued success. And if you have if you have a personal history of uh, putting in the discipline, putting in the work to learn, you start recognizing that hey, you know that thing that I did in high school, I can now apply. Quite frankly, I, I could not have, I could not wait to leave high school. I never wanted to see another book. <laughs> right? I thought. I'm going to go join the army. I'm going to run around the countryside. I'm going to shoot some guns, right? And of course, I did all of that. But Tom, they gave me a big stack of books. To, I'm like, shit, they tricked me. <laughs> but after a while, you realize, man, you know, this learning thing is really important because it really just, it opens up your mind as well. It challenges you, get you to start think in different ways. And just, again, allows you to, have the confidence that, you know, if, if I don't know this thing that I want to go pursue, I can go learn, learn about it and then go pursue it. All right. So back to the toolkit we've got, we're teaching them to dream and we're making mm -hmm. sure that they get educated. Um, what else? Um, something that is really hard to do. Walk your own path. Uh, and by that I mean... If you are hanging out with a guy or a girl or a group of people who are heading in the direction that is opposite of your dreams, you need to say, hey, see you later. I'm going to be over here. So if you want to join me, feel free. And that is very difficult for most people to do, especially young people. The peer pressure is is great, but that's one of the things they have to do. What do you say to somebody who's like, look, man, I'm growing up in the inner cities. 
uh, the world is stacked against me. People don't want me to succeed. I actually had a kid whose mother told him, the world does not want people like you to succeed. And I was like, what is happening? So yeah. the, things really are stacked against them. They've grown up in poverty. They've had a terrible education. Um, they don't have any connections. They don't know how to raise money. Like they, they, le- they have legitimate excuses to stay where they are. What do you say to somebody like that? Everybody has legitimate excuses to stay where they are. That's just the, the, the fact of life. Um, but I think that when you develop this, when you trick yourself, lie to yourself, you just be- develop this belief that, you know, I, so the, term, the, the words I used to use to myself, Tom, is I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but I just have to. You know, and so if you, I could argue that the world was st- stacked against me as well, and I had no idea how it was going to happen. But you just, you don't listen to the guys who say, man, you're from the hood, you can't be in the army as an officer, right? Um, y- y- we have definitely a, a social construct in Jamaica that would, would support that as well, right? Um, but you just, you ignore that. You ignore that. I heard a guy, I don't remember who he was. He was in Hollywood, a black guy. And he said, I just, I just had to lie to myself so that I could succeed in Hollywood, right? And I, and I think, you know, that kid in the inner city or in rural wherever who has uh, supposedly the deck stacked against him and maybe even people telling him that have to create, I, I heard, uh, listen to David Goggin talking about just you have to create this other story, this other guy who can go accomplish this. There are examples. There are tons of examples. And now, unlike when we were growing up, you had the internet with so uh, much information at, at your fingertips and examples of people who came from exactly the same circumstances or worse. And so the question is, man, if they can do it, why can't I? If I'm watching ABC Wild World of Sport and this person is competing at the Olympic Games, training to compete at the Olympic Games and have the whole host of problems in their personal lives that they're overcoming. I mean, just doing that alone would be a miracle. But doing that and competing at the Olympic Games, I'm like, I can do it too. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? You fail. Uh, Well, get get back on the horse. Keep on pushing. Talk to me about learning. So one of the coolest things in your story was seeing you guys that first year in the Olympics in the background, like trying to watch all the other teams to try to learn. What does it take to really get great at something? And you guys did it so quickly. I mean, you really didn't have a long time to prepare for the <laughs> Olympics. Um, no. How did you How did you guys do it? What's the secret to getting good fast? Um, commitment man you have to be committed to just doing what you need to do when you need to do it even when you don't feel like doing it you know my focus was just on learning how to push a bobsled and getting comfortable working through my fears because i was really scared of getting down right do you have a trick for working through your fears like if you're afraid of speed and heights um, obviously, I love your sort of breakthrough moment of if it kills me, it kills me. But do you have breathing techniques or is it all just, <laughs> yo, I have a goal and I'm going to do it no matter what. And yeah, I don't uh, allow myself to back down. Yes, yeah, yeah. So part of it is, um, especially in a race, it's so much easier because it's just like I turn into this other person. Right? Like I don't even know who he is. But as, even as though in my first Olympics, I was a pusher. Then I became a driver in the other two. And I'm nervous leading up to the moment when they say the start is clear for Jamaica. It's work time. It's, work time. it's just work time, so you just go. Um, I think whether you're Bob setting or you're trying to sell something to a, you know, to a client, um, you, just, you, you just have to make yourself do it. You have to make yourself pick up that, 100 pound phone and make the phone call um and you might screw it up but you every time you do it you learn something you become more comfortable and you may never be totally comfortable and that's the thing with fears you may never 
be totally comfortable with them, but they become manageable. Um, and in my mind, if that's what you need to do in order to achieve that goal, yeah, so that's what you do. So yeah, we, we just kind of committed ourselves, you know, watching the very good people and the not so good people trying to figure out what is what are they doing that I'm not doing? What can I pick up? What can I apply to myself? And I do that all the time. I, as a speaker, I watch everybody. I watch a politician and I watch, you know, you know, John Doe being interviewed on the side of the street where there's bad English, you know, but he may say something. I'm like, I like that. Um, I'm going to use it, but I'm going to say it this way kind of thing. You know, you, you, you study, it's, it's about lifelong learning. And what, in terms of competition, or I guess anything, but what's the power of vis- visualization? Do you use that as a technique? I do. Um, I've, I've, been, I've been using visualization before I knew what visualization was. I used it in high school. Um, as I told you I'm not a sprinter. I'm a, I, I ran 800 and 1500 meters. And, and so we have a thing called sports day. And I ran the 400. It's a sprint race. I always win. Um, but I know I'm not the fastest guy. But I, I remember one particular race, Tom, that night, the night before, I didn't really sleep. I was in a stupor. Because all I did that entire night was think of myself running every meter of that race. And then I woke up the next morning. I got to school early. I walked through the race. And I won. And when I joined, I started bobsledding. They call it visualization. Um, but it's important, man. It's, it's important on so many different levels, right? One, it, it gives you, it, it puts you in that place that you have done it before. So it really Im- helps you to improve your performance. But, but also, if you believe, believe in the law of attraction, it's one of those things that as you put yourself in the place as, of, of that person having this thing, achieving this thing, living this thing, the, the powers that be, the universe brings it to you. So it's a really important part of successful living in every aspect. Is, what do you think about um, the law of attraction? Do you think it's about, the, it aligns you so you take the right actions, or do you think that the universe is actually giving you something because you've asked for it? Well, good question, because a lot of people, when they hear that and hear what I just said, think that you just kind of sit on your sofa and you visualize or you meditate and it comes. It, maybe, I don't know, I, that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> maybe I should try that, maybe not. Um, I'm too impatient to sit around waiting. So, so dude, what it does is that it allows you to take what I call inspired action. Because you're, as you're visualizing and you start feeling the sense that you can be this person, you can become this army or sorry, this bobsledder, then you, you just, and you and I know that it, it takes so, a tremendous amount of work to achieve any goal that you set for yourself. And, it, and that in itself can uh, demotivate you because that's a ton load of work and pain and suffering, man. But when you have it, I guess, in here and in here, then you just work. And then I think that's how the universe, right? The providence, somebody says, do what you can, but be bold, because providence basically will meet you halfway. I think that's what happened. I love that, man. Are there any, um, so I use beliefs, most people probably call them mantras, but I have like uh, 25 beliefs that, really govern how I approach my life. Um, do you have any beliefs or things that you repeat in your head that allow you to keep going when things get hard? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing, on, wearing on my chest right now. You know, that's kind of the thing that I, I just, um, I don't know how to give up. And I, I don't know how to give up. No, uh, you know, oh, let me clarify that too, because or expand on that, because a lot of people think that, you know, when you are working at something and it's difficult, and I, and I say keep on pushing, it means that you, you just kind of keep going and and don't stop, and you keep doing the same things over and over again. And, and you know, I say all the time that really successful people quit all the time. 
they quit on the strategy, right? They quit on the, on the they change their plans because they realize this plan isn't working. They don't quit on the goal. That's still out there. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, the, the tougher it gets, is, honestly, the, the, the more my spine stiffens. I'm like, you know what? I, I have to figure this out. So this is not working. Let's, uh, you know, let's think about another route, another strategy to get there. So yeah, it's uh, uh and it, it can be, um, you know, all of us we feel frustration at time, and I get frustrated. But I'm like, like in my head, I don't give myself another option but to succeed. So I keep on pushing. Mm, I love that. Are there core values or anything that you made sure you instilled in your kids? Um, perhaps the, the more, well, well, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I try to get them to believe in themselves. I think that's the, the first, first thing, because without that self belief, you can't get anything done. Um, work hard. I, I'm a believer in, in hard work, uh, treat others kindly. Um, and you know, don't, and, and, and by the same token, don't let other people take advantage of you. And so it's, a uh, you know, the world that we live in right now where, um, um, you know, if you're a kid at school and you have an issue, you go to the teacher or some guy or girl punches you. Um, and my kids believe that, right? And my, my wife believes that. I don't believe that. I believe that you, uh, if he hits you, he hits him back harder. And so next time he knows not to hit you, you know, but... Um, they're not. They're, my kids aren't buying that one from me, but they're, they're definitely I impress on, upon them. Treat people well, and don't allow others to treat you poorly. Dude, I love that. It's obviously super controversial right now, but yeah, to me, if if somebody hits me, it is. Um, I mean, look, are there circumstances where it would be a turn the other cheek moment? Yes, of course. But for yeah. the most mm-hmm. part, if somebody is coming after you, it's time to stand your ground. Um, yeah, disproportionate response, as uh, it has been called, I think is is a very powerful way to move through life. It's like, look, I'm more than prepared to leave you alone. Like, I have no interest in this whatsoever. But if you bring the fight to me, you should expect a response and a very aggressive response. And they and they learn and they learn. I mean, it's one of those things that because I, I and it should be the last kind of last you know you know course of action. I, you know, I spoke about when I was a teenager. Growing up, and we, we ended up in blows with some of the guys I grew up with. It was really the last words of action, and I, I ignored them. I took the jeering. I did all of that, but then eventually I go, you know what? Let, let, let's let's have a different conversation. And so sometimes that that is necessary, I believe. Controversial, I agree, but sometimes very necessary. It's just, it's real life, man. That's 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 the world we live in. Too true, man. Where can people find out more about you, dude? I, I have so enjoyed my swim in your mind. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's great hanging out with you. DevonHarris.com. Very easy. I tell people I'm the easiest guy in the world to find. Maybe second easiest to you. But uh, DevonHarris.com is my website at Keep On Pushing 88. Keep On Pushing 88, the year of the Olympic, first Olympics. Uh, are my handles on Twitter and Instagram. And, of course, I'm on LinkedIn as well. So. I'm there, man. Come find me. I love it. Guys, all right, you're definitely going to want to dive in. It's absolutely extraordinary. He's got so much powerful advice. And speaking of amazing advice, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe here. And until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. You're expected to jump over the table. And, and there's, so that's, it's going to happen. So what are you going to do to best prepare yourself? And that's kind of that motivation of like getting to the contest and throwing the big tricks and seeing your competition and that motivation. And, and I've always loved that.